Hey, 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 hey. All right, good morning, guys, and welcome to the first ever Monday morning sidewalk video. I tell you what I wanted to do today is I wanted to go ahead and uh, try to make this as simple as possible with doing these videos, but it didn't turn out that way. So what I had to do is break out my best camera, and even though we've got the the mic wired and everything. Um, you can expect a lot of background noise. Uh, we've got new roofs going on because of the uh, storms that came through. Bugs flying through, wind chimes going off, and all that kind of stuff. But I really feel like that um, the way to reach out to younger people these days is through video and other means other than just writing words. I think people uh, of the younger generation, just a very few of them, want to want to sit, settle, and read. So we're gonna we're gonna try something a little different to add to the writing. Uh, if you're young, you want to read, read all about it. That's cool. Um, these videos are going to be very rough, not cut. If there's a bug like that one flying around me, it's in, it's in the video because we're going to try to move these things really fast and get them out really quick. This is the Monday morning sidewalk, very first one. Um, let me just start from the top. I have a laptop right here and it kind of tells me what I'm actually trying to do. And it uh, also might add some supplemental information on other posts and things like that. So the weather last week, this is a great place to start. It was really uh, kind of rainy, unstable, and windy. Um, we had a, a, you know, a kind of a situation where it was raining quite a bit in the afternoons uh, intensely and then would go away and then come fire up the next afternoon, but that's gone away. Uh, one lake that suffered uh, suffered, actually uh, gained greatly, is uh, a lake called Granberry down in Granberry, Texas. And that, that lake went up several feet. Up here, we didn't get nearly as much of that. So um, as far as water in the watershed. So we, uh, we're still suffering here quite a bit. This week looks a little more stable. Of course, we've got high winds. And you can tell by listening that there's a, there's a great bit of wind going through. Um, there's a lot being said and written in the message boards about uh, freshwater fly fishing and saltwater fly fishing. What they're kind of settling on in the coast is that things are still behind, actually further behind than they are here. We're talking four to six weeks is what those guys are talking about. I haven't been there yet, so I don't know if, if this thing is really uh, kind of stunted by the weather this year. Um, here in the freshwater area, I would say yes, we're still behind based on what I'm seeing out on the water. And um, we'll go look at it. I'm, as soon as we get done with this, this video this morning, I'm headed out to the water. So we'll see what that's all about. Um, you may have seen uh, some posts, the Whopper story on catching this one particular bass on Ray Roberts. That final part of that will be out this afternoon. Uh, it's a pretty good story. There's also a story uh, in Lone Star Outdoor News coming out, I guess in the latest issue, it's about the uh, Texas Fly Fishing Expo down in New Braunfels. So pick up your free Lone Star Outdoor News at any of your regular uh, outlet boxes. They're usually outside of um, Bass Pro or, or Cabela's or places like that. Um, we also covered last week the birthday party at Living Waters Fly Shop. That, that's a pretty neat fly shop down in Round Rock, Texas. There's a lot of fly tying, and Chris down there is a great guy. Hope you get a chance to actually stop in and, and see those guys. A really neat place, really neat location, and I would think that some of this rain might have affected their fishing, and hopefully for the better. Got some future articles we're working on, and we're always looking for uh, stuff from our readers to bring new information, new perspective on fly fishing in Texas uh, through articles in Texas Flycaster. Uh, I've been writing now for eight years for this publication and um, I'm not burned out or anything. I still enjoy the heck out of writing and going and doing new things, but the more people we have with input into the website, the better the website is, I think. There's a couple of stories that I, I really am anxious to get started with. One is on Austin Anderson. You guys might know him locally. He's a young fly fisher and, and he's kind of switched over to an even darker side of Euro carping, but he is about to go off to Stephen F. Austin to go to school. And, and so uh, I've been fishing with him, gosh, four or five years. So since he was like 
14 or something like that. So it's kind of fun to do a transitional story on a young man who, who really is dedicated to fly fishing and, and the, the whole outdoor adventure. Sean Bischel's another guy, an artist that I've, I've enjoyed seeing his work progress. He, he does wood and he does painting. His stuff is really kind of graphic and very uh, um, kind of tribal, as in northwestern tribal looking. And I'm hoping to get down to see him in his studio and go fishing with Sean Bischel. Um, as far as anything else goes, this is it for this podcast, uh, for the uh, morning, uh, on the Monday morning sidewalk. I hope you enjoyed it. I hopefully we can make it more exciting than this. I, I don't think that uh, it's wrong to be exciting in fly fishing and be on the cutting edge of things. Uh, some people wouldn't consider a video like this cutting edge, but some people would. So I hope I don't alienate any of you by running videos, and, and I hope that you have the uh, opportunity to read as well as watch in whichever format you like that you enjoy Texas Flycaster to the fullest. Uh, my tip of the day, I'm always going to end these Monday mornings with a tip. And that's for you young guys out there. You may think you're bulletproof, but you're really not. Um, I spent all, this is getting close to 4th of July. I spent all my 4th of Julys as a kid on South Padre Island because that's where I grew up, is near South Padre, and my grandparents had a house there. And so I got a whole lot of sun exposure. So the things you want to do, actually, in your younger years to prevent looking like me in your older years is uh, I use Smart Shield for one. It's a good product. It really works and um, it's a Texas based company. Then another thing you want to do is go with buff gloves like this right here. These are these are just their lightweight kind of gloves. They make some heavier gloves that are that are really good. Um, but these, these work just fine to cover, keep the sun off the top of your hand. You can see all the sun spots on the top of my hand right there. And then, uh, of course, buff. While you're ordering from buff, make sure you also order yourself a, uh, a, a buff. Take one of these like this, like that. Always wear your polarized glasses. You can uh, use the regular ball cap, but you got to pull it up like this. Pull it down over your eyes so you like this right here. And you're good to go. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you maybe next week or maybe before then. As always, you can always find out everything you need to know about fly fishing in Texas at www.texasflycaster.com.